Do you want me to do who would like to take over? I can take over. Okay. There we go. Oh, lovely. A resident driver. I say like Paul oh <laughs> I didn't realize you had a turn. Sorry. <laughs> the other way I'm like, what advanced is driving technique was being deployed. Advanced driving technique, yeah. When yeah. one, when oh, one hand oh, cranks is, up, you switch to uh, This is the first time I've done it uh, driving at night though. Oh. Oh. Good thing you can see the lines, eh? Yeah, yeah right? <laughs> H just like in Victoria. Are the lines shorter at night? Yeah, because it's yes. supposed to be just the reflective yeah, paint, apparently. A it's just eyes, an yeah. actual feature. Yeah. Wow. We've talked before about how the um, it feels like the headlights are illuminating them. Um, I'm not convinced that it's doing anything to change the yellow. It is not. I yeah. don't think it is. It just perceptually feels like it is, but yeah, yeah, because it those two gray circles don't actually light up any other part of the road. Nope. Yeah, in theory, you, the line like, should get longer when it goes into the headlight. Exactly. Because, yeah, that's a yeah. very good point. It's just playing the headlights on top of them. Yep. Mm -hmm. The headlights on underneath the lines, but yeah. Yeah. Layers. Mm -hmm. Like onions. I've really liked how intense the green is this year coming through the Mr. Pie. Because oh. it feels like, I, we've tried all sorts of different things. Yep. This is the first year I think that we're doing um, FPGA hardware that is, because a lot of other years it's the Sega CDs and the JVC XIs and stuff and then the virtual bus was the way it was. But there's just something about like the way it's rendering here that it feels like the green just feels way more intense. I don't know if that's just it the, might be the 4K monitor. Might be the 4K monitor. I was going to say that must be especially pleasing to Ian. Because, <laughs> to have all, the because sobs have their dashboard lights in green. Oh, oh do they? Yeah. Oh, okay. It's a, a special sob feature. I was buying a new radio uh, a head unit for my Jetta, and uh, Volkswagens are all in red. Yeah. But they had a Skoda version of the of the radio I could get where everything was in green. Ah. And so I was like, I could get the Skoda head unit. This is like Chinese head unit um, that's like OEM in, uh, in China. But they're like, we do sell the Skoda version of this same head unit. And it means that all the buttons on the side are all not red, they're all green. And I was like, oh, that would be really cool because I'm like green's my favorite color. But then I realized that none it of my interior would match. match. Yeah. Rest. Yeah. <laughs> and also... Red's so much nicer. Red and amber are so much nicer in your eyes at night. And I was like, yeah, I think I'd rather do that. It, it is superior. The the sobs, I think, special thing was um, the green is looks really cool. It looks like a jet fighter, but it's not actually good for your night vision. But then there's a a night mode as well where it turns off a bunch of the right. like for the climate control and the radio and whatever, so that you don't need. There's a little toggle to turn all that off. That's great. Sobs. They're yeah. eccentric. <laughs> <laughs> I was surprised. Uh, I owned a 190D, Mercedes 190D. Right. I like, I'm a diesel guy, so and eventually it'll be an electric guy. Uh, and then I had a E300D as well. And I'd never seen this on American cars, which I drove all the time. But um, these were like 1989, 1995. They had parking lights, and I couldn't understand what the point of it was to be like, oh, if I turn the knob all the way to the side, then the marker lights on this side turn on, my ambers on this side turn on, and on the other side, the other ones turn on if I turn up one more. And I was like, I don't get what this is for, because why would you ever want to just have one side or the other turned on? And after doing some reading, I discovered, oh, it's so that when you pull over to the side of the road, the, those marker lights are to let people know there's something there in the way, but you're not running all four of your lights. You're just letting the people behind you know that there's something here. Yeah, that's a very niche. It's like, well, you can drain your battery slightly slower if you yeah, if you do this. Lights. Yeah, that's that's one of those things that I guess we don't really use anymore now that there's street lights basically everywhere. Is parking lights? Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, it felt like it was kind of an idea of this is what you would use if you were parked in a dark area, a dark residential area, yeah. country road. Yeah. So I, I have used, um, I do TSD Rally in BC. Alrighty. So um, that's the only time I ever actually use parking lights for what they're for is, right, you, you do a stage, you do the transit to the next stage, and then you know part of the event you're doing nighttime stages so you're sitting there waiting for your time to start the stage right and you don't want the guy coming in behind you in this completely dark gravel road in the middle of nowhere to run into the back of you right so that's the only time i've actually used parking lights for what they're intended for even fog lamps are a thing that i'm like 
I never was taught how to use those when I was in driving school. Yeah. Yeah. And then to finally have fog lamps, I was like, same thing. What do I use these things for? And then when I was driving during a snowstorm, I was like, oh, that's what these are for. They're for. <laughs> yep. I can stay on the road. That makes sense. Yeah, you can see. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, nowadays, so many cars come with really bright white LED fog lamps, which are not actually good oh. at... Um, can you yep. go... Trisha need, uh, is downstairs. Yep, yep, I got it. Oh, we just passed a bus stop. Oh, yeah, we no, I would not get saw it out of the corner of my eye. <laughs> it's okay. You can see that from there? Wow, I saw nice. it just as it was yeah. passing. Oh, okay. It was the very last moment that I see that. I was like, nope, I haven't even got one during the day, so... My parents just bought a brand new Hyundai Palisade, uh, which is their big. Wait, can you take over? Because I realize they're not going to be able to. They don't. Have, neither one of them have a way yeah. of getting the door open. <laughs> <laughs> and then when we hear when we hear a knock at, uh, knock coming yeah. from outside, that Corey has to go save yeah. Sarah, then I'll take over. Yeah. 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 But yeah, my one big complaint about this big ass SUV that they bought is that it is, of course, very new which means the entire light array is just bright white LEDs. And I am just, I hate this because it's like, it's high in the air. I was complaining to them that I'm kind of like, yeah, so the guy behind me in his truck, they could see the truck just illuminating, they were riding in my car. And I have, I have, you can do this in Alberta and it's technically legal to have it still when you come into- Technically legal. Yeah, technically legal, which is the best kind of legal. In, Alber in Alberta, you can tint an awful lot of the windows of your vehicle. An awful lot. An awful lot of them. Not all of them, but an awful lot of them. Uh, and I did have to get the tinting removed on the front windows. This was, I did not get the tinting done on my car. Um, but they, uh, uh, the rear window is 50% tinted, I think, or darker. Like all the, all the rear windows of my car are tinted. Um, and a truck pulls up behind us with bright, bright, bright lights and just still illuminated the back of my car because it's up high, I'm down low. And I'm like, yeah, so this is why I'm not a fan of these LED headlights, especially the bright white ones. And my parents are like, yeah, this is quite the thing. And I'm like, yeah, kind of a lot like that Palisade you just bought. You know, like I love bright white LED high beams. Yep, yes. Because yes. You can use them, and you can see, and it's amazing, and you turn them off when there's a car coming at you. Exactly, yeah. Uh, but yeah, all the all the cars with super bright white LED running lights that are way up higher. Yeah. Not good. Yeah, I, don't, I don't like it at all, and I don't know how they... I mean, I know why they did it that way, uh, because obviously it is a marketing thing to say, look at how much better you can see yeah. in the front of your vehicle, and it's like, yeah. Not thinking about how that will affect what everybody else is seeing, but it won't matter. Soon everything will be self-driving cars and we'll just be getting into accidents all the time. So um, uh, Collisions yeah. all the time. As, as Chad points out, LEDs themselves are not the issue. The technology is great. You can yeah. have whatever color temperature LED you want. You can aim them properly. Um, Infrared. You could. <laughs> if you wanted to drive with night vision goggles, then yes. Yeah. Um, but no, I'm gonna bake the oncoming vehicles. <laughs> You're gonna need some high power, very power infrared. Uh, I mean, yeah, it would be kind of nice to just have like uh, the softer, like slightly yellowish low beams or, yeah. or running lights. So that's what ends up happening with a lot of rally cars. Oh. Is right, you have. I mean, most people who are doing rallies aren't driving brand new cars. Right. So you've got conventional halogen headlights, and then you have LED light bars, which for legality in rally rules have to be wired so they can only be on with your high beams. Oh, cool. So they they all have to be wired into the car's circuit so that if you turn your high beams off, all of the auxiliary lights go off. So then you get the best of both worlds, right? You just have nice headlights that aren't going to bother anybody, um, and then when you're on the back, you know, super dark back roads, then you click that on and it becomes daytime. So do do uh, rally cars have to be, um, they have to be street legal until yes. they get to the track or to, to the course? So even on the course, technically they have to be street legal because when you finish a stage, you drive to the next stage oh, okay. on public roads. Okay, yeah. cool. I had a, a friend of mine, he did some Rally X, I think is what it was. Rally Cross, yeah. Yeah, where it was the, the idea of you have to make each each checkpoint 
at the time they tell you to make it at, as opposed to just finish it as fast that's as That's TSD can. rounding. Right? Oh, that is? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, that, TSD is time speed distance. Okay. So you get told on this part of the stage, you need to average 55 kilometers an hour. Right. And there's hidden checkpoints, and for at each checkpoint, of course, they know to the second when you should pass it. Right. And for every second you're early or late, uh, you get a penalty point. And that means that they can, that I guess also means that then they can tailor the courses in a way that's like, we're not letting people get in here and race flat out. It's not the fastest right. car that wins. It's the most accurate driver. That and this wins. is all run on public roads. Yeah. So, I mean, it's forest service roads. Okay. You're not really going to run into much traffic, right. um, but it is public roads. Um, they're not closed stages, um, like in a stage rally where you're just dry, driving flat out. Um, so all of the average speeds to make it legal have to be at least 10% below the posted speed limit. Ah. Of course, on a forest service road in BC, the posted speed limit is 80 kilometers an hour. Right. So you can go up, it could be up to 72. Um, one of the organizers, the way he describes how he chooses a post, uh, an average speed to try and hit, is um, if you are doing that speed, when you go around the tightest corner on the stage, then the, the tow truck will have just enough cable to reach where your car lands. <laughs> that's, that's awesome, that's good. Oh. I um, so do you when you you, you participate do you yep. do you drive do you navigate I drive you drive yeah you have an in car navigator then too I do yep yeah they've got I will go do that do you have somebody who rides in the hood of the car too to make sure the motor's still running I see those <laughs> things from time to time no I don't I don't have a mechanic unfortunately okay. I have to do all that myself oh ah, right. <laughs> I'm gonna go do this I wanted to continue the conversation but I'm gonna do go do the thing I have to do which is rally driving <laughs> yep. One time, um, uh, Bill's mom, uh, Kate Watt, came by. She had one of the, the like, scroll. Yeah, for the, the rally raids, the, the, for, for the, the motorcycles. For the, the race, the, uh, uh, the, like, sort of scroll of all the directions. It's yeah. Totally bonkers. Yeah, the, the ability for a motorcycle rider to do all the rally without a navigator, and they just have a little scroll thing, and they go, yeah, that's the next step. It's also like all written in French, because apparently, because that's, well, it's like, right. that, that's like the, the, because that's where it got really popular, I guess. Yeah. And so that's like the language of the sport. <laughs> I guess, yeah. All the ones here are in English, thankfully, but, um... I never thought, yeah, I guess for for the Dakar rally, especially. Yeah. Um, right. It oh. would be in French, because it used to be the Paris Dakar rally. Now it's in Saudi Arabia, but it's not Yeah, I guess there's not like deserts so much in wow. Paris. 